plane shot down with a 1911 bad electrician now followed me for a while you know my love for the 1911 it's rustic it's efficient it's timeless it just works i do love me some 1911s but this this is some next level stuff all right we've already talked about the 1911 on this channel so you should know that the military version is chambered in 45 acp acp god's caliber Gotta love it. He's standing for automatic Colt pistol. Or if you watch the video, you would know that it actually means anti-cow projectile. I actually cite that all the time. I will actually call it anti-cow projectile. <laughs> it's kind of replaced the actual ACP in my brain. It is just anti-cow projectile at this point. What if I told you the 1911 was also the only pistol to ever be credited with downing an enemy plane? All right, deep breath. Here we go. No, this makes sense, actually. If it was a single, if it was a single pistol, it'd be the 1911. Yeah, it would be the 1911, wouldn't it? Of course it's the 1911. Once upon a time on March 31st, 1943, 12 American B-24 Liberator-class bombers would depart on a mission to bombard an enemy-held bridge in Burma. It's worth noting that the B-24s were so dangerous to their pilots and crew that they were unaffectionately nicknamed the Flying Coffin. I feel like a fat <laughs> version of Eminem. Shortly <laughs> oh, that is a... Sounds like an awful experience. Into this mission that would be ambushed by 13 enemy planes. There's conflicting accounts on what kind of planes. Some say it was a Ki-43, and some say it was the infamous Japanese Zero. Potato, potato. Nobody cares. Moving on. During <laughs> I'm sure there's one person out there. There's just a group of people out there that would be able to cite the difference with you. I have no understanding of it. I'm familiar with the Japanese Zero, but I mean that's mostly because they are, as he says, infamous. I have no understanding of the Zero and how that differs between the other uh, other models. This, uh, this, this some stuff went down is what we're ha what's happening right in this ambush one of the b-24s would be critically damaged and the crew would be forced to bail out amongst that crew was a young texas lieutenant by the name of owen j baggett after exiting the nice. b-24 and deploying their parachutes the enemy pilots would circle back and open fire on the men two mm -hmm. members of the crew were fatally wounded and wait this has to be after they land though right wasn't there rules of engagement for planes and pilots specifically like you couldn't shoot troops that were parachuting down or else that was was, was that a war crime? I don't remember. I, there, it was at least a rule of engagement, I thought, or at the very least, it was one of those kind of like unspoken rules, so to speak, where if you have units, troops that are just parachuting down, how do you fight a plane coming at you just being able to, you know, <laughs> to take you down, right? I, at least as far as I understood, this was a rule of engagement. But if nothing was written down, I mean, it's not a war crime the first time, is it? At this point, the surviving members of the crew would do their best to play dead, doing their best to appear to be hanging lifelessly from their parachutes. Right. This time, a single enemy plane would double back with its canopy open, checking to see if all the members of the crew were dead. As the enemy plane approached Lieutenant Baggett head-on, he would draw his 1911 and fire four shots. The plane would immediately stall out and appear to spiral out of control. I'm trying to tell you that he just parachute no-scoped a fucking plane. Look, all I'm saying... Y'all COD players need to get next level. You gotta go shoot down that Harrier with your 1911. Come on now. Ne gotta get next level. This is so, like... This is so next level. It's not even funny. Like... The 1911 just works is what I'm trying to say. It just works. You know, I actually think it's a war crime to shoot at somebody while you're parachuting. But it's also a war crime to shoot at somebody while they're parachuting. So those cancel each other out. Right, yeah, no, this 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 would make sense, right? At the very least, it is a unwritten rule of engagement, or even it might be, even be written. It's like, yeah, no, they're kind of helpless. They're kind of going down. You can have your, your ground battle. You can absolutely have that. But while they are transitioning from the air to ground forces, they're kind of untouchable, so to speak. So once that convention gets broken, silliness ensues. Thus, you have the 1911 that is 1-0 against aircraft <laughs> either way this is probably the first time the geneva convention got a complaint that the enemy was hacking the yeah, new pistol probably. buff was too op i already made every nine millimeter guy mad in my 1911 video oh the ballistics between 45 and nine millimeter are virtually the same but i mean but it also comes down to preference though right like if somebody's like kip what do you what's your what's your recommendation you know what is your uh what what, what do you like what do you think is better well what do you like more right you can fit more nine millimeter in a double stacked mag you can fit less 45 ACP in a single stack mag, right? Do you want the kick? Do you not want the kick? Are you using polymer? Is it all steel? Is it just a metal upper receiver? Well, no, sorry, not upper receiver. Uh, the slide is what I meant. I'm so used to the AR platform. You couldn't tell. <laughs> you know, what, what are you using? It comes down to preference, right? I like both 9mm. 
I like 445 ACP. I like both of them. I think they each have their uses. At the very least, you know, I like the 1911. I think that it being in 45 ACP just makes sense. It's also heavy enough and just blocky enough that it's good and I like it. That being said, I also like something like a Beretta, right? Beretta in 9 mil. It just works for all intents and purposes. <laughs> It really comes down to preference, right? And there's many, many videos. There's actually a video that Grantham did testing 45 ACP and uh, 9mm. I think the 45 ACP slightly outperformed. I'd have to go back and watch the video. But really, it comes down to preference. And if you want to practice on 45 ACP, just do it. If that is the caliber that you want, just do it. And obviously, you can defend it, obviously. And it's all in good fun. But when someone comes up to you and is like, you know, oh, bah, you know, oh, well, well, 45 ACP is outperformed by 9 millimeter, eh, but the difference is negative. It's like, and who cares, right? Someone could show up in chat and be like, hey, Kip, I prefer uh, shorty 40, sh I almost said 40 short and weak, 40 Smith and Wesson, right? Cool. As long as you enjoy it, awesome. Hey, I enjoy 10 millimeter. Cool. Awesome. How is it? Seems like it's a pretty good round. I enjoy uh, 7 millimeter Mauser, right? Cool. Emma must be a pain for you to find, but awesome that you enjoy it, right? I don't really... I mean, the debate comes up, you know, even in the AR field, right? Oh, 6.5 Creedmoor versus 308, right? Well, and even 30 out 6, even though that's bigger, right? But like 6.5 Creedmoor versus 308, right? I think technically it comes down to at distance you're lobbing the 308 versus the 6.5 Creedmoor that is more aerodynamic and can go further. But in the end, your 308... It's going to be cheaper than your 6.5 Creed. More, oh boy, that price hurts. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just down to what you want, right? I think that this is a lot of heated debate over nothing. If you like 40 Smith & Wesson, go for it. If you like 308, go for it. If you like 30-06, right? Go for it. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Cool story. How many planes has it shot down? And I'm not trying to bash on 9mm. I like 9mm. I'm just it saying it never took out Starscream's fucking grandpa, okay? Yes. And this is the part where people get all mad and they argue. But it never happened. A fighter pilot would never open his canopy. But dude, it was World War II. These aren't modern jets going the speed of mock fuck, okay? Fighter pilots in World War II. Yeah, World War II was also just different. Like, it was just a different one, the technology was different. Two, rules of engagement were different. Three, like, excuse me. Three, just the whole, even the, the Pacific Theater especially, was a just different kind of encounter. It was a different battlefield entirely. Or to open their canopies all the time. There were some pilots that preferred to fight with the canopy open so they could bail out quicker. I can but, see it. Oh yeah, well, it's just statistically impossible. But No, it's not. In fact, there's an entire theory in the aviation community about it called the Golden BB Theory. Jet like... Uh, there's a theory in military aviation that enemy flak anti-aircraft rounds where missiles don't matter because only one is meant for you. And if it was meant for you, if it was your time to go, the golden BB barrier name was going to get you no matter what. <laughs> this is amazing, actually. This happens more than you'd think. Anyways, after the crew parachuted down to the ground, they would be captured and serve as POWs for the remainder of World War II. Right. While at that POW camp, they found a colonel that claimed that he found a downed enemy pilot that had been ejected from his aircraft and had been shot by a pistol caliber round. Oh, no. Adding further credit to this story. Yeah. After the war, Lieutenant Baggett would make it home and continue to serve in the military where he reached the rank of colonel. He would then retire to his home state of Texas, being the only man to ever win a quick draw competition against a plane. Why do all the crazy stories always trace back to Texas? Most gangster battleship of all time, the USS Texas. Texas is just built different. Uh, they have pothole issues. I hear that they have a lot of pothole issues with the roads. But Texas is just built different. Like, Texas both intrigues and terrifies me, if that makes sense. Not, not like Ohio. Ohio intrigues and terrifies me for different reasons. Mostly because I can never escape Ohio. For I've never even been to Ohio. I can't escape Ohio. I don't understand it. Texas is... Texas is built different. Audie Murphy, the most decorated war hero of World War II from Texas. Lafayette Gene Poole, maybe the most successful tank commander of all time, earning him the nickname War Daddy. The guy they based <laughs> the Fury movie off of. Yeah, also Texas. In conclusion, the Colt 1911s rated for people, cows, and apparently planes. Merch store and other links available at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. I mean, if Texas has got it, right? If Texas got it, why not own it, right? I mean, all I'm saying, if you got it, flaunt it, right? Get that cred. Get that. <laughs> it's so good. You know, um, war is, warfare is interesting. Arms races also are interesting, I will say. But alas, that was another amazing, look at this nerd!
<laughs> Look at this nerd. Oh, that's already at 9.6. Oh, wow. I didn't actually know that it got as much as it did. Okay. Thank you, everybody. But last, this is another amazing fat electrician video with uh, one of my favorite uh, firearms of all time, the 1911. If you haven't tried a 1911, you know, I'd uh, I'd honestly recommend it. You could do a lot worse. You could... Uh, I'm not gonna say specific brand names, but you can do a lot worse. The 1911, it's stable, it's reliable, it's rustic, it's it's just, it's it's heavy. I love it, and uh, yeah, that that's my recommendation. Start with the 1911, go from there. Too heavy, too big, you know, uh, too unwieldy, you know, just go from there, right? Start your choices down from there. But alas, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the 1911? What are your thoughts on uh, you know, any of the calibers listed? Do you have a specific caliber that you like using that I haven't listed, right? Do you use something like, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to try pull one off the top of my head. I'm not really pulling one off right now. 5.56, five, uh, 762, 762R, 762 Tokarev, right? Uh, nine by, well, there's nine by 19, which is nine, but there's nine by 20 as well, right? And what your thoughts are. I, I encourage the discussion. I encourage, especially people who have questions about, oh, well, I've been thinking about this caliber. What's your thoughts on it? Let me know all that comment and you know stuff in the comment section. And uh, if you haven't checked out the Fat Electrician, you should go check out the Fat Electrician. He really puts out a lot of great work, and I still want to continue to send as many people as I can over his way. So I really would appreciate if you went and checked out the Fat Electrician. I can't wait for him to get over two mil subs. I know he's got it in him, and uh, that'll do it for now. See you next time.